So in today's lesson, we're going to practice graphing polar equations. And honestly, once we do one of these, you'll pretty much get the hang of it. And you'll see that it's just a lot of plug and chug. We're just going to be entering values into a calculator and you'll really be able to get the hang of it and do the rest. So I'm going to model one for you and I will go ahead and post the graphs for the rest of these uh, in both the classroom and in um, our class locker. So you can go ahead and take a look at those. But I really feel like once you do one, uh, you'll you'll be fine. Again, I encourage you to have one, um, the notes printed out in front of you so that you're not trying to draw this freehand. And two, just having access to a graphing calculator to one, get the values pretty quickly and efficiently, but also be able to check your values um, and check your graphs also would just be beneficial for you. So if you have all those in front of you, let's give this a go. So first of all, we have our polar axes right in front of us. So like I always recommend, we're going to go ahead and start by labeling our polar axis. So I'm going to go through and I'm just going to label these. Now, the polar equation that we're given right here is r is equal to 2 plus 4 sine theta. And this is a limoson. It's going to be a particular type of polar graph. And we'll see more and more of these in the next couple of lessons. But what we're seeing here in this equation is that r is a function of theta. In other words, our directed distance, our distance from our pole or our orig origin right over here, is going to be completely dependent on what theta is here. As theta changes, as theta increases from 0 to 2 pi, we're going to be doing different things to it. We're going to be multiplying it by 4 times sine theta plus 2. So you can do this stuff manually, um, and you can also just quickly enter in these values in your calculator. But just take a moment right now and just think about what the first value would be. When theta is equal to 0, sine of 0 would just be 0 times 4, still 0, plus 2, and we get 2 here. Now, we've got pi over 12 as our next value. And since that's not a value or an angle that we're used to working with on our unit circle, let's just go ahead and evaluate the rest of these just using a calculator. So take a moment and pause the video right now and just go ahead and see if you can just crunch the next couple of values below. So if you went ahead and did that, you should get, and let's just round to two decimal places, something like this. And I'm just going to go ahead and enter uh, the rest of these values so we can just start plotting them. And when we do the second column over here, we should get these values. And I might have said two decimal places, but I'm seeing as I went along that just one decimal place would have just been fine. But here, let's just do that. Otherwise, we're going to get something a little bit larger. And these are our values. So these are our R values. These are what we get once we plug in our angles for theta. Now, let's just go ahead and start plotting them. Let's do the first couple. So when our angle is theta, or excuse me, when our angle is 0, our R value is 2. So we're going to plot a point right over here. There's 2. When theta is equal to pi over 12, we get 3.04. So we're going to just plot a point that goes a little bit after 3 there. When we get pi over 6, our r value is 4. Pi over 4 is going to give us 4.8, which is right around there. Pi over 3 gives us 5.5, which means we're going to jump right around there. 5 pi over 12 is going to give us 5, uh, 5.9. So really darn close to 6. Oops. And then right over here, we're going to get this value. And I'm not going to call out every single one, but you should then proceed to get these values. And you'll notice, and hopefully you'll notice, that they seem to right now have some level of symmetry. So we're at 4.8, if I'm not mistaken. 
then this would be four. And then this is a little over three. And then back down here, we're at two. So you could go ahead and start plotting the rest of these points, or you can start connecting all of the dots. Um, I kind of recommend doing them a little bit in chunks, just because you're going to see in a bit that they might start overlapping, and it's good to not get too bogged down with where they might be. But we're just going to go ahead and connect the dots. Now, when we are connecting these dots here, you'll notice that I'm not doing straight lines. I'm actually curving them. And that's honestly and, and maybe unfairly because I already know that these, these graphs are curved. You don't know that just yet because you haven't really worked with too many of these. But if I were to decrease my step size, in other words, if I wanted to plug in a very, very small angle, like one degree here or whatever that might be in radians, I would get more and more points that would actually lie on these. And we would, connecting a bunch of these very small lines, we would actually get something that resembles a curve. So you're just going to kind of have to take my word for it. Or you could go ahead, if you don't believe me, and just start plugging in very small angles for theta and connect those dots that way. But you're going to see that after a while, we're going to get something that really just starts curving like this. Okay? And not a great looking graph, but you're just trying to get the idea of what a polar graph would look like. Let's go ahead and try our second column now. So now, when we're at 13 pi over 12, at 13 pi over 12, we get 0 0.96. And if you remember, the first ring is right over here. So 0 0.96 would be right around there, or really, really close to that one. At 7 pi over 6, which is this angle here, we're back at the pole. So let's just go ahead and just connect that there while we're at it. And just you would see that it looks something like this. At 5 pi over 4, so this is a little bit hard to see because we're at 5 pi over 4 now, which is right over there. At 5 pi over 4, now we're getting negative 0 0.8. If it were 0 0.8, we'd be somewhere around here. But because, oh, excuse me, if it were 0 0.8, we'd actually be somewhere around here. But because it's negative 0 0.8, we want to remember, reflect over the curve or the pole, and we should actually be right there. And you're going to see that the rest of these values now are, or from the next couple of them, are also going to be negative. So at 4 pi over 3, we get negative 1.5, which is here. 17 pi over 12, we're at negative 1.9. 3 pi over 2 is going to be negative 2. And we're going to just keep going again. We're starting to see some symmetry there as well. And then we're back at zero. So if we connect the dots that way, we're going to start to see something that looks more like this. And actually, I wasn't really happy with how that last one looked. Something like that. So now we're ready to move on to the next couple of angles. And so I think the only ones that we were left at were... 23 pi over 12, which should be 0 0.96. So again, this is my angle, 23 pi over 12. Since we have 0 0.96, which is again really close to that one right over there. And at 2 pi, which is right over here, we're back at 2. So we would get this. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is a limousine. And if we were to follow the order in which these points were plotted, Notice, we didn't start at the pole. We actually started here at 2. So this is the direction, actually, that we moved. Oops. We went this way. Okay. Let me do that one more time. So we started at 2. And we ended it back at 2. So that's what's a little bit tricky about some of these polar graphs, is that we won't always start at the pole. In fact, it won't, just by looking at the graph itself, it's not always going to be clear to us where exactly was the quote-unquote starting and ending point for our angles from 0 to 2 pi. But the process of actually creating these polar graphs aren't too bad. We're just going to have to plug in some angles, see what our, our outputs are for our values are, and just go ahead and plot them. Take a moment right now, try the rest of them, and then check them with the graphs that I have a little bit later. 
And I know this was a little bit of a shorter lesson. Fortunately, it's not too bad of a lesson for today. It's a little bit of a shorter one, so I'll leave you with this joke. There are two bears, a brown bear and a white bear. And the brown bear says to the white bear, hey, why are you always walking around in circles? And the white bear says, because I'm a polar bear. <laughs>